well, I've been researching heat for 20 years. I can tell you how bad it can be everywhere. Uh, there might be times of the year where it will be so uncomfortable that if you go outside and you don't protect yourself by keeping uh, fluid close by, wearing appropriate clothing, uh, it might be unlivable. Uh, but being a climate scientist, I'll stick to the climate uh, direct impacts or the physical uh, risks and impacts that um, keep me up at night. For Singapore and Southeast Asia, uh, heat, as uh, what has been mentioned, is a big problem. Uh, it's going to get warmer, it's going to get more uncomfortable. Uh, we can stay indoors and play around with air conditioning, but if the air conditioning is powered by fossil fuels, we won't reach net zero. But Bigger concerns are the more uh, the changing climate system making droughts more likely, floods more likely, droughts in particular for our part of the world. It's going to impact on the very vulnerable um, forest stocks for paper and pulp for oil palm in certain parts of uh, you know Borneo and Sumatra. Uh, if you're going to couple that with warmer temperatures, with more El Ninos, uh, the problem of bad air quality from haze is going to be more apparent. So you're shortening the odds of that happening. And that's something that you know myself, my family, we don't want to, um, all of us in this room and in the you know, on Zoom uh, elsewhere, you don't want to be subject to poor air quality driven by climate change. So that's one risk I will watch out for in this part of the world, in Singapore and Southeast Asia. How about Greater China? More or less the same or <laughs> is it different? Uh, Greater China, heat definitely is... Well, I've been researching heat for 20 years. I can tell you how bad it can be everywhere. Uh, there might be times of the year where it will be so uncomfortable that if you go outside and if you don't protect yourself by keeping uh, fluid close by, wearing appropriate clothing, uh, it might be unlivable. So that's one concern. For Greater China, two risks I think are very apparent. One is that of severe storms like tropical cyclones. So I recently came back from Hong Kong where there was a discussion that if you have uh, a repeat of the 2018 typhoon, I think it's Mong Kok, um, and if let's say Mong Kok, instead of just missing Hong Kong, it hits directly on Hong Kong, uh, what will be the repercussions? And I don't think that, that part of urbanized, you know, the Pearl River Delta is ready for that. And unfortunately, just like the odds for hits, those sort of severe storms are going to be a problem. And also for coastal cities along East Asia, uh, the threat of sea level rise. Um, you've, you've got a double whammy that could potentially happen. Severe storm like a typhoon coming up, driving higher sea levels. All that infrastructure is going to be vulnerable for, for all these very important coastal cities, which as we know are nodes of capital, uh, especially financial capital that will affect not just greater Asia, but the rest of the world as well.